The only things that you need to know in order to produce the unit circle off the top of your head are your two special triangles and the fact that a full circle is 2 pi radians. So starting with the Cartesian points that exist on the circle, we can take a circle and divide it into fourths like we have here, and we can treat the center like 0, 0 on a Cartesian plane. So now you have these four arms just like you would have on a Cartesian plane, and you can treat it very similarly. If we were to take one step to the right, we would end up at the point 1, 0. If we were to take one step up, we would end up at the point 0, 1. If we took one step to the left, we would end up at negative 1, 0. And if we took one step down, we would end up at 0, negative 1. Just like on the Cartesian plane, but we're treating kind of the point where the lines intersect with the circle as one step. And that's kind of why it's called the unit circle, because it's like moving one unit on the Cartesian plane. Now, knowing that the full circle is 2 pi, we can kind of treat this as 0 as our starting point, but also we know that once we rotate once fully around, we've gone 2 pi radians, which means that this is also 2 pi, depending on how you're looking at it. You start here at 0, you go all the way around and end up in the same place, having rotated 2 pi radians. So with this knowledge now, if we look at this, we know, well, this is half the circle, which means that to get there, we have to rotate half of 2 pi, which means we're rotating 2 pi over 2, and the 2s cancel to leave us with pi. So that means that this arm right here needs to be labeled pi. In a similar way, if this is pi, then going like this is half of pi, which means that this arm is simply pi over 2. To look at the whole circle again, here we've gone pi over 2, here we've gone 2 pi over 2, which reduces to pi, and here we have gone 3 pi over 2 because we've gone the pi over 2 distance three times. So we've gone 3 pi over 2 radians to get here. And again, if you were to go one more, you would end up with 4 pi over 2 total rotation, which is the same as 2 pi, and confirms what we knew before. So that's how you get those angles. Now what we can do is further divide the circle. So let's take all of the pieces we had before, and let's divide them in half like this. Now, we've taken the 2 pi section, if we look at the 2 pi section, and we've divided it in half. So that's one, two pieces. So we've got one, two pieces of this 2 pi section. And we've kind of done that on both sides. So in total, we've gone one, two, three, four. We've made four rotations of the pi section. So that means that each segment must be pi over 4 radians. So we can treat this first one as pi over 4 radians, because this is the one that starts from 0. If we go one more time, we've gone 2 pi over 4 radians, which is going to reduce to pi over 2 and confirms what we got before. If we go one more time, now we've gone a total of 3 pi over 4s. So we've done 3 times pi over 4, which is the same as 3 pi over 4. And that gives us our label for this arm right here. It's going to be 3 pi over 4 radians. Here we've gone 4 pi over 4, so 4 pi over 4. They're going to cancel. You're going to end up with pi. That's going to reaffirm what we got before. Here we've done it 5 times, so now we've got 5 pi over 4 radians. Here we've done it 6 times, which is going to give us 6 pi over 4 radians. That's going to reduce to 3 pi over 2 and confirm what we got before. And now here we have done it 7 times. So now we've got 7 pi over 4 radians, and if we were to do it the last time, we'd have 8 pi, 8 pi over 4 radians, which is going to reduce to 2 pi radians, and it confirms what we knew before. So beyond this, we can continue to take sections of the circle to get all of the other angles that we need. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take sections of the circle like this. So we're going to try to take kind of the pi over 2 section, and we're going to try to divide it into thirds like this. So we get one, two, three sections of that pi over two. So we could do this for this one. We could do this for this one. We could do the same thing down here and kind of mirror it around the circle like this. So we've taken one, two, three, four, five, six divisions of the pi section. And what that means is that one of these starting at 0, is going to be pi over 6 radians. If we take that pi over 6 turn twice, that means we have done 2 of the pi over 6s, which is going to land us with 2 pi over 6 is pi over 3 radians. 
So over here, we know this label needs to be pi over three. If we go one more time, we're going to end up with one, two, three pi over six. So three of the pi over six rotations, which is gonna land us with pi over two and reaffirms what we got before. If we do it another time, now we have done it one, two, three, four times. So we've done four of the pi over six rotations. That's gonna get us four pi over six, which is gonna reduce down to two pi over three radians. So we know that this label is two pi over three radians. If we go one more down to here, now we've gone one, two, three, four, five. So we've done it five times. So we've done five times the pi over six rotation. That's gonna give us five pi over six. If we were to do it one more time to get to the line where it says pi, we will have done six pi over six rotations, which is gonna reduce down to pi and confirms what we got before. Going one more, now we've done it seven times. So we've got seven pi over six radians here. One more, now we've done it eight times. So we've done the rotation eight times pi over six, which is gonna get us eight pi over six radians. And that's gonna reduce down to four pi over three radians. So right here, we're gonna have four pi over three. If we were to do it one more time, now we've done it nine times. So that's gonna be nine of the pi over six turns. That's gonna get us nine pi over six which is gonna to reduce to three pi over two radians. And that confirms what we got before. Here, we've done it 10 times. So we've done 10 of the pi over six turns. That's gonna get us 10 pi over six. And that's gonna reduce down to five pi over three. So this is gonna be five pi over three radians right here. In a similar way here, we've gone 11 of the pi over six. Here, we've gone 12 of the pi over six rotations, it's gonna be 12 pi over six radians. This is just one rotation. So this is 11, that was my mistake. So this is going to be 11 pi, 11 pi over six radians. And in my diagram, the sections are a little bit uneven. Um, I've even confused myself there, but this, this, and this should all be roughly the same angle um, in a properly constructed diagram. So that angle there is going to be 11 pi over 6 radians. And that's how you can get all of those angles. So moving on from that, what if we wanted to kind of figure out the coordinates of where all of these angles are hitting the edge of the circle? The way that we can do that is using our special triangles. Because, every, because this is a unit circle, every time one of these uh, lines hits the edge of the circle, you need to have traversed a distance of one. So this line is one, 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 one. All of these have to have a length of one. Right now, the hypotenuse on this is two, and the hypotenuse on this is root two. And that introduces a problem because we need kind of the hypotenuse of all of the triangles that we draw inside the circle to be equal to one. So what we really need to do is kind of morph our unit circles to work with, uh, so to sorry, to morph our special triangles to work with the unit circle. So the way that we're gonna do that is here, we can say, well, how are we gonna turn two into one? We can take two and divide it by two, which means we can divide all of these side lengths here by two. And this way, this length is one, that one's one half, that one's root three over two, and we have what we wanted because our goal was to make the hypotenuse one. Here, it's a little bit trickier. We've got root two, okay, and we wanna turn it into one. The way we can do that is, well, we can start by getting rid of that square root. If we multiply it by root two, we're gonna end up with root two squared, which is gonna leave us with two. And then if we were to divide it by two, we would land back with one. So what we're really gonna do is we're gonna take root two and we're gonna multiply it by root two over two. And that's how we're gonna turn it into one. And we can do the same thing with all of these right here. So that's how we're going to morph our special triangles to work for our purposes. So now what we can do is we can basically take all of the points where the lines that we drew are intersecting the circle and we can kind of draw lines straight down towards kind of the flat axes that they correspond to towards our, our X axis like this and like this and like this. And we're gonna draw 90 degree angles here. And we're gonna turn these into triangles. So let's take a look at the first one here. So we draw a 90 degree triangle with this. We know this is pi over six from what we discussed before. So if we've got a pi over six, that means we're gonna to need to use this triangle right here. 
we've kind of morphed our triangle so that this is 1, and we know what this is going to look like in the case where our hypotenuse is 1. If we treated this kind of like there was a Cartesian plane right here, we can take a look at this and we know that if we were to get to this point right here, which is really what we're looking for, we're going to have to go to the right by root 3 over 2, and we're going to have to go up by 1 half. And that's how we're going to get the coordinate that we need. So we're going to get root 3 over 2, 1 half. In a very similar way, we're going to make a triangle out of, oh, we're going to make a triangle out of this line right here. So this time we've got pi over 4, which means we need to use this triangle. And we know that if we want to get to this point up here, we're going to have to go to the right by root 2 over 2, based on how we've multiplied this out. 1 times root 2 over 2 is just root 2 over 2. And we're also going to have to go root 2 over 2 up. So the coordinate that we're going to get here for this coordinate, that's going to be root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. Again, we can do the same for this triangle right here. So this time we have pi over 3. And again, we're going back to referencing this triangle up here. And we know that we're going to have to go this time if we've got pi over 3 down here. So that's our angle that's down here. What we're going to need to do is kind of orient ourselves properly. So if we are starting looking at pi over 3 in the bottom, that means that we're trying to get to this point right here because we've kind of rotated our triangle to look like this with the pi over 3 down here, not up here. So we're going for the kind of opposite vertex. And in order to do that, we're going to have to go 1 half this way and root 3 over 2 this way. And what that corresponds to on this circle is really going 1 half on the x-axis and root 3 over 2 on the y-axis. And so that's going to leave us with the point 1 half root 3 over 2. A very similar thing is going to happen with the rest of the circle, but you'll have to modify it according to the Cartesian plane. Recall that this distance is 1, but this distance is negative 1. So what's going to happen is you're going to end up with the same points, but kind of um, with their sign inverted in to, uh, to make it match with where you are on the Cartesian plane. So here we have a positive x-axis, which means all of these x-values, they're going to be positive. But on the opposite side right here in this quadrant, we have a negative x-axis, which means that our x-coordinates are going to be the same, but they're going to be inverted so that they're negative. So this one is going to be negative 1 half root 3 over 2. This one right here is going to be negative root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. And notice the y-coordinates are still positive because we're still going up, which is the positive y-direction, but this time we're going left, which is the negative x-direction, which is why we need to invert that coordinate specifically. And this one right here is going to be negative root 3 over 2, 1 half, like so. And in a very similar way, when we go down, now we're in a quadrant where we've got a negative x-axis and a negative y-axis. We're going to the left and we're going down. So in a very similar way, this one is going to be negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. This one is going to be negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. And this one is going to be negative 1 half, negative root 3 over 2. And notice how both coordinates are negative because we are in the bottom left quadrant where we've got a negative x-axis and a negative y-axis. And now again, we're going to return back over to this side over here. And now we've got a positive x-axis, but a negative y-axis because we're going down still, but now we're going to the right. So what that's going to mean is our y-coordinate is going to be negative, our x-coordinate is going to be positive. So we're going to continue with the same process. This is going to be root 3 over 2 because our x-coordinate is positive and negative 1 half because we're going down. Our y-coordinate is negative. This is going to be root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. And this is going to be 1 half negative root 3 over 2. So that's how you can construct the entire unit circle basically off the top of your head um, with an understanding of the special triangles and the fact that a whole circle is 2 pi radians.